injured my knee playing basketball and had surgery for a torn meniscus. Is it possible for me to ever attempt Zazen in a half or full lotus? Answer. If the surgery has been successful, the prognosis is generally good. The meniscus will replace itself with a thinner, more flexible tissue. There have also been cases in which the meniscus has slowly healed itself without surgery so that the knee joint was able to function as well as before the injury. As the knee begins to regain its flexibility, begin bouncing it gently a little each day until you feel able to sit comfortably in the half or full lotus. See legs. Pain in half lotus. Daily massage, herbal poultices, and herbal teas, as well as therapeutic doses of vitamin C, are all helpful. Legs. Falling asleep. Question. My legs fall asleep very quickly whenever I do zazen. What can I do? Answer. When the legs fall asleep during zazen it is usually because of pressure on either a nerve or a vein or both. Changing one's position on the cushion, that is, sitting farther forward or back, will relieve pressure on a nerve. Those who are developing circulatory problems in the legs would do well to change their zazen posture frequently so as to not to cause any undue pressure for prolonged periods of time. Massaging the legs before and after zazen, thereby stimulating circulation and strengthening the nerves, is also helpful. Legs Pain in half lotus Question I have a lot of pain when I try to sit in half lotus. What can I do to help this situation? Answer. Before one is ready to sit in half lotus the ankle and knee. Joints must be made flexible. This may be accomplished in different ways, one of which is the following. Sit on the floor with both legs stretched out in front of you. Fold the right leg and place the right foot on top of the left thigh as far up as is comfortable for you. Hold the right foot with the left hand, and with the right hand bounce the right knee gently. If it is not possible to place the right foot on top of the left thigh, place the sole of the right foot against the inner left thigh and bounce the knee from this position. Continue this flipping of the knee for a few minutes and then reverse your legs and repeat on the left side. Eventually, as flexibility develops and the groin area begins to open up, it will become possible to place the foot higher up on the thigh. Do this bouncing of the knees every day for a few minutes and it will soon become comfortable to sit in the half lotus. A variant of this exercise is to place the solace of the feet together, holding on to the toes with the hands, and to flip the knees up and down. Another exercise that will open up the groin and hip areas is to clasp the lower leg and raise it high in the arms. The knee cradled in one elbow and the foot in the other elbow, and then to swing the leg back and forth. Repeat with the other leg. Swimming is also an aid to flexibility since you can assume postures in the water that might be painful otherwise. A sauna is another advantageous place in which to first massage and manipulate the knee, ankle, and groin areas and then sit in the lotus position. If you have mild pain during sitting because your ligaments are not yet stretched, bear with it, but if the pain is intense, unfold your legs and try another position. Don't grit your teeth. Suppress the tears, and tell yourself, I'll take the pain even if it kills me, out of a misguided belief that Zazen is asceticism. Zazen should leave you with a feeling of well-being, not acute discomfort. Neck and Head Question When I do Zazen a tightness develops in my head and neck and this seems to bring on a burning sensation across the shoulder blades. What, if anything, can be done to prevent or correct this? Answer this is an example of what happens when your energy is locked high in the body and not allowed to flow naturally. If your attention is focused in the neck and head area, tension and pain usually develop there. The burning sensation results from an impingement that prevents a free flow of blood to the area. To remedy this, first allow the shoulders to hang effortlessly on the frame. Next take a deep breath, lift the sternum slightly, and slowly exhale. This will release the pressure in the shoulders, freeing the blocked energy. Care must be taken not to attempt to straighten the shoulders or pull them back deliberately. They will straighten of their own accord if the sternum is lifted. Simultaneously the head and neck will ride freely on the spinal column. Make no conscious. 
Effort to hold on in the area of the head and neck, for this will create tension and, eventually, pain. Saliva Question Sometimes my mouth fills up with saliva during zazen and I have to swallow frequently. What causes this? Answer This reaction may occur if the head is held too far. Forward or with the chin lowered. To correct this, the head should be pressed back so that you feel your collar on the back of your neck. Be careful not to allow the tongue to drop from the upper palate, where it normally rests during zazen, as this, too, may cause saliva to collect in the mouth. Sleepy zazen. Question. I do about an hour of zazen in the morning before going to work, but it is not good zazen because most of the time I'm dozing off. What can I do about that? Answer. Normally it takes about an hour for the body to awaken. Fully once you've gotten out of bed. There are ways, though, of speeding up this process. A brisk walk outdoors, filling your lungs. Deeply with the clear morning air, is most helpful, as are stretching exercises. Tapping the head lightly with the tips of the fingers will also clear the cobwebs from the brain. One procedure that is particularly stimulating is the following. First fill the sink with enough cold water to dip your face into. Then open and shut the eyes under water while holding the breath for the count of, say, 20, letting the cold water come in contact with your eyeballs. Another excellent wake-up exercise is the following. As you sit with your legs crossed ready to begin zazen, clasp your hands behind you, elbows straight. Take a deep breath, then slowly bend over from the base of the back, slowly exhaling, until your forehead touches the floor. Later on you'll be able to touch the floor with your chin instead of just your forehead. Breathe normally while holding this posture for about half a minute. Then take another deep breath and slowly straighten, again from the base of the spine, while you exhale. As you raise your head and trunk, stretch hard, opening up the chest and thrusting out your buttocks until your trunk reaches an erect position. Now, still holding your trunk straight with your hands clasped behind you, Take one final stretch, pushing your head back as far as it will go and keeping the chest open wide. Not only will this exercise awaken and invigorate you, but if you have any kind of breathing difficulties it will thoroughly clear the nasal passages. Finally, let me point out that dozing off, at any time of day, is a common complaint of sitters. It doesn't appear to be related to whether you are tired or rested or have had your normal amount of sleep or not. The problem is one of motivation. The need for self-realization is not yet strongly felt, and dozing off is a mild form of escape from the tedium of zazen. What you need to do is remind yourself. When dozing off, that death may come at any time. And that to have the rare opportunity of being born a human being in this lifetime and not to realize your true nature is, as one master put it, to have lived in vain. Thoughts Affecting Posture question. I've been doing zazen for a short time and I find myself getting depressed as unpleasant memories keep coming up to consciousness. When this happens I also become aware that my posture changes for the worse, and though I try to straighten up, it doesn't stay that way for long. Answer. The problem is a dual one. The invading thoughts destroy the mind's tautness and cause the body to slump. With a slumping body comes a bent spine. The sternum becomes concave, pulling the shoulders forward and down. The head juts forward, the internal organs become cramped, the hands slip away, and the whole attitude of the body is one of dejection and defeat. It is almost as if one were saying, I can't do it. I'll never make it. I'm not strong enough. Worse, a slumping body encourages an even greater invasion of negative, unpleasant thoughts, and the cycle is enlarged. Realize from the outset that your memories, like all thoughts, are impermanent and insubstantial, unreal in the sense that they are empty of any self-substance. Therefore you must not cling to them. Furthermore, if in your sitting you take care to keep your chest up and open, your shoulder blades will straighten and the shoulders rest easily on their frame. The head will also sit back on the cervical. Spine and the ears will line up with the shoulders. The internal organs will no longer be cramped. 
if the buttocks are thrust out in back. Providing a broad base for the trunk, with the abdomen relaxed and the hands turned slightly inward, resting close to the hara, there will be generated a totally different attitude. One of alertness, poise and determination. Negative thoughts will bounce off this straight alignment of body-mind as the whole posture proclaims, I can, and I will. Tilting of trunk. Question. The monitors are always straightening my sitting posture. Evidently I tend to lean to the right, though I'm not aware of it, and when corrected I feel like the leaning tower of Pisa in the other direction. Why does this happen? Answer. If our body is out of alignment in general, its imbalance will show up in your sitting. There are many causes for such an imbalance. If one is a student and always carrying books or heavy packages on the right side, for example, the body tends to lean to the right because it has been pulled in that direction. Similarly, if you are in the habit of standing at ease with one hip thrust out, or you play a great deal of tennis, an imbalance may result. Obviously the first step is to try to correct physically the condition causing the imbalance. That is, to carry books or packages on both sides, or to stand with the body weight evenly distributed on the feet. Next, if while sitting you lean to one side or the other, you may need to place a small, flat cushion or folded towel under one buttock to bring the trunk back to vertical. Then when the body has grown accustomed to sitting in an aligned position the temporary cushion or towel may be removed. It will not feel strange to sit up straight. There are also psychological reasons why the body will list to one side. You will find that timid, self-deprecating persons, those lacking a strong center, tend to walk and sit with a slump. Since body is the physical aspect of mind, an improved posture and bearing will tend to create a healthier psychological condition. One of poise and self. Confidence. But unless the root sense of ego I is seen through. And in a self-deprecating person it is merely inverted, not weaker than in a domineering person there can be no fundamental or lasting change in personality or posture.